Welcome to Book News, brought to you by Kangaroo Reads. In Book News, we discuss the biggest stories in the world of books and reading. Today, we're talking about Spotify's recent foray into audiobook distribution and what the future looks like for this experimental service. In 2022, Spotify made a big announcement. It was launching audiobooks. The world's largest streaming service had previously acquired an audiobook company and had secured deals with large publishers such as Penguin Random House, HarperCollins, and Simon & Schuster to make their audiobooks available on its platform to be purchased on demand. For those who don't know, Spotify is a music streaming service that allows users to listen to millions of songs and albums. It's available on most platforms, including Android and iOS, and has a free ad-supported version as well as an ad-free premium subscription option. Spotify was founded in 2006 by Swedish entrepreneurs Daniel Ek and Martin Lorentzon. It launched in 2008 and has since become one of the largest music streaming platforms in the world, with over 356 million monthly active users and more than 178 million paying subscribers as of December 2021. The company's goal was to create a legal platform for music streaming that would combat piracy. In addition to its extensive music library, the company has been expanding its offerings to other spoken word media, including podcasts and audiobooks. In late 2022, Spotify started its audiobook service by offering the audiobooks in the US, and later expanded the service to Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, the UK and Canada. Currently, the company offers a library of at least 300,000 audiobooks, which are sold separately to its existing subscription service. Each audiobook needs to be purchased individually, otherwise known as a la carte, which is a stark contrast to the all-encompassing nature of Spotify's music streaming subscription plan. The move into audiobooks marks a significant shift for Spotify as it seeks to diverse its revenue stream beyond music streaming. However, the company faces stiff competition from other audiobook providers, such as Audible and Apple Books, but its vast user base and established brand could help it carve out a significant share of the market. However, recently there have been interesting developments within Spotify that could affect the future of their audiobook service. The first development is that Nir Zickerman, who is currently leading Spotify's new audiobook venture, has announced that they will be leaving the company later this year. According to an article in The Verge, Zickerman is among the last of the executives who were instrumental in building Spotify's podcast distribution service. He co-founded Anchor, a podcast creation and distribution tool with Michael Menigno, who left Spotify last year. Zickerman assumed responsibility for the audiobook side of Spotify in 2022, but will now leave on October 1st. In the meantime, he will help with the transition to a new audiobook lead. Spotify spokesperson Rosa O oh confirmed that Zickerman will be departing the company. Zickerman clearly has expertise and knowledge of the business. Prior to the announcement of his departure, he had projected that Spotify's audiobooks offering may take different shapes in the future. For example, Zickerman had previously spoken to the podcast Hot Pod and had said that the company is looking to develop new business models for audiobooks, which could include free ad-supported titles or even a Netflix-style all-you-can-listen subscription. It is clear that the audiobook department of Spotify had large ambitions but it is unclear how it will navigate with new leadership so early on in its lifetime. It is also unclear whether Zickerman's replacement will have the exact same grand vision as he did for the audiobook department of Spotify. The second development is that Spotify CEO Daniel Ek has been campaigning to try and change the restrictions that currently affect the audiobook buying experience on Apple devices. Apple's App Store rules require app developers to use Apple's payment system for all in-app purchases of digital goods. This includes subscriptions, upgrades, and virtual goods. The company charges a commission of up to 30% on all of these purchases, and the rule applies to all apps that are distributed through the App Store, regardless of if the app is free or paid. 
In addition, Apple does not allow developers to steer customers away from using Apple's payment system or to offer alternate payment options within the app. The only exception to these rules are for physical goods and services, such as ride hailing apps or food delivery apps, which are allowed to offer alternative payment methods. These App Store rules have been constraining Spotify for quite a long time, as it does not permit people to sign up to a Spotify subscription within the iPhone app itself. Instead, Apple users of Spotify are directed to using the web service on a different device in order to be able to manage their subscription. But in particular, the App Store rules have affected Spotify's ability so far to sell audiobooks to customers using iPhones or iPads. Because of the fact that the audiobooks are sold a la carte, or they have to be purchased individually, this means that the audiobooks cannot be purchased in a convenient way using the iPhone or iPad app. Potential audiobook purchasers would instead, as they currently do for other Spotify purchases, would need to use another device or access it through the web service. To combat this and other issues Spotify has with Apple, the CEO Daniel Ek visited Washington DC to campaign for a bill that would force Apple to change their ways. While Spotify is not the only company that wants Apple to loosen their grip, they have been one of their most vocal detractors. Spotify considers Apple's App Store rules to be too strict and a sign that Apple has unchecked power in the app market. Daniel X campaigning is ongoing, but in spite of his efforts, so far Apple has not been motivated to change their ways. Both of these situations pose significant obstacles for Spotify audiobooks as a viable business venture. Not only are they struggling against Apple's severe App Store restrictions, but the service is losing their leader and primary spokesperson. It will be interesting to see in the coming months how Spotify manages to navigate these challenges. Spotify has made significant investments in their audiobook service so far, but with the recent setbacks, it remains to be seen whether Spotify's audiobook venture will truly take off or if it will ultimately fall flat. Only time will tell if Spotify can successfully compete in the audiobook market or whether they will lose to their larger rivals such as Audible or Apple and will have to shift their focus back to being a music and podcast streaming platform. What do you think about all of this? Have you tried listening to a Spotify audiobook or would you consider buying one? We would love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment and like this video if you enjoyed it. Liking and commenting on our video helps it to perform in the algorithm. We post bookish content every week, so subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that you never miss a video from us. Thank you for watching Book News, and until next time, happy reading.